The scandal that's exposed a former Liberal's sexual antics is threatening to expand tonight as MPs fight over a laptop that could implicate other WA politicians. Gary Ad said we don't know what's on it, but it can't be good. Tracy, the computer's owner, Phil Edmund, warned it was so full of dirt it should be thrown in the Swan River. Instead, the battle over the laptop is heading to court. It's been seized by the Upper House's powerful Privileges Committee and the Corruption and Crime Commission wants it back. So hopefully the public can find out who else may have been involved in making dodgy expenses claims. Phil Edmonds' sex, lies and claims of a videotape have reignited a power struggle. The Procedures and Privileges Committee now, I think, should hand over that laptop immediately. The laptop in question belonged to the Liberal politician turned sugar daddy Phil Edmund, yesterday exposed for abusing financial allowances on sex, wine, travel, even a yacht. Much of the evidence about his rorting sits in that computer and the Upper House Committee is refusing to hand it over, citing parliamentary privilege. Labor power broker Sue Ellery is demanding Upper House President and Labor colleague Kate Doust give it back to the corruption watchdog. Clearly, the Triple C has reason to believe there is further information which may well reveal further corruption by Mr Edmund and perhaps others. Mr Edmund was caught on telephone intercepts claiming what's in the laptop could end careers. Parliamentary privilege does not trump corruption. While a showdown in the Supreme Court as early as tomorrow will figure that out, other politicians tried to hose down some of the Edmund revelations, like the ones about lavish dinners for the Liberals' so-called Black Hand Gang, a term given to a mafia group. That's what it is. What it is. That's what it is. Fine coming from Robert De Niro. Well, it is what it is, Gareth. All I'm saying is... That it is sorry, sorry, sorry. It is what it is. But senior Liberal Peter Collier could have picked his words better. Enter Treasurer Ben White, fronting the cameras to talk about surpluses at a time of appalling political excess. I'd be stunned if there are current sitting MPs that are using their electoral allowance for what Phil Edmund is, was using his electoral allowance for. But Nine News couldn't ask the Liberal leader, Lisa Harvey, what she thinks. The vast majority of my colleagues in Parliament are just not like that, and it's certainly not Liberal Party culture at all. She was only interested in feel-good radio. Gary Ad said Nine News. But there is some good news for the state government, a big boost to the state's finances. Jacqueline Robson, the mid-year budget update will help WA. Tracy, this is the big headline number, a $2.6 billion surplus. That's $1.1 billion, more than at the last state budget in May, and it's driven mainly by high iron ore prices. Net debt is now $7 billion lower than projected since the McGowan government came to power in 2017. What that means is we're paying $8 $800 million less in interest to service the loans. The McGowan government's also bragging about disciplined control of expenditure over the next four years. What does that actually mean? Well, it means public servants, including teachers, nurses and police officers, shouldn't expect much of a pay rise anytime soon. And as for your household bills, there's no sign of relief until at least June next year. But the Treasurer has promised to focus on the cost of living in his next budget. Tracy. Jackie, thank you.